Hello, True Student Ministries. This is Taylor Fish, and I'm excited to spend a little bit of time with you today. Excited to be joining you in your quarantine devotions. I hope you're enjoying your quarantine, and most of all, that you're committing uh, this this time and this season to growth. Uh, I truly believe that at the end of all this, that we will see the greatest revival and the greatest harvest that we have ever seen in uh, in North America and in the world. And I believe that the young people um, and true student ministries are going to be a great, great part of that. Uh, but I want to I want to talk to you a little bit uh, about something that. I feel that all of us need to be doing every single day in our prayer time. Uh, we are we are apostolic Pentecostals. We are people of the name, and uh, we have the power of the Holy Ghost in us. Saying that, um, it is not the will of God for us to just pray normal, dry prayers. And I want to talk to you a little bit about something you may have heard of before. And uh, it's really kind of an older term, uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit about praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Uh, I, I, remember, uh, I remember as a young boy, I had a lot going on in my life, a lot going on in my world. Uh, I have a father that still today is, uh, struggles with, with substance abuse. He was a, uh, he's been a crack cocaine addict. Uh, for, for a very long time. I grew up in a very troubled home, but I'll never forget there was a day that my pastor, uh, he stood up and he said, if you're ever going to be used to God, you have to build a prayer closet. Now, I didn't know what a prayer closet was, and I actually, I took it literal. I, I, I know in Matthew 6, Jesus says to go in the closet and shut the door, but it doesn't necessarily mean to commit your own closet to prayer. But I went, uh, I went in, uh, I remember going up to my room. I shared a room with my brother and I took all the clothes out and I threw all the clothes on the bed. And I remember running around the house and trying to find something that resembled an altar. I took, so I took a little wooden box out of my sister's room, emptied it out. And I put that, I put that little uh, wooden box in, in the closet. I de dedicated the only closet that I had to prayer. I remember 14, 15 years old praying and um, I would, I'd feel such a presence of the Lord and I'd get to a place in prayer where I ran out of words. Have you ever been to a place of prayer when you ran out of words? What do you do when you get to a place where you run out of words? Well, the beautiful thing about it is I have the Holy Ghost and uh, I, I remember being 14, 15 years old and not knowing what else to say. So I would, I would begin to pray in tongues. I'd begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I'd begin to pray in the Spirit. I did not even know uh, exactly what I was doing. I didn't, even, I didn't even really know how much power that it had. Uh, but anybody that has the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost can, can pray in the Spirit. You really only have two qualifications. There, you don't, you don't, there's only two qualifications that you need to pray in the Spirit. Number one, you got to have the Holy Ghost. And number two, you have to pray. <laughs> so in order, to, in order to pray in the Holy Ghost, you have to pray and you have to have the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, in, uh, the Bible says in Acts chapter two, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting, appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. The Spirit began to speak through them. Now I want to tell you and, and encourage you in your prayer time, and I and I hope that you're committing, uh, committing time to God, committing time to prayer during this season. Um, I, I, I'll tell you, during during your prayer time, there's going to there's going to be a time where you run out of words completely. There's going to be a, a time where you don't know what else to say. We've all been in them times where. We went to a we went to an altar and we committed God. I'm going to spend an hour with you, or God, I'm going to spend 30 minutes with you, or God, I'm going to spend 20 minutes in prayer with you a day, and then 
you know, 10 minutes in or, or, you know, a few minutes in, we feel that we've ran out of words. You know, if you have the Holy Ghost, uh, you can pray in the Spirit. And a lot of times, uh, a lot of times, whenever you run out of words, it, it, it just means you need to quit speaking English. Because you have the Holy Ghost, you have the power, and sometimes you get to a place of the unknown where you don't know what else to say. That's why God has given us all, has, that's why God has given us the Holy Ghost. He's not given us the Holy Ghost just so we can speak in tongues on Sunday. He didn't give us the Holy Ghost just so we could, uh, just so we could speak in tongues and, and use service or when we gather. But uh, there is power in speaking in tongues. Something happens when you begin to lift your voice and you begin to speak in tongues and you begin to speak uh, an unknown language that uh, you begin to speak that unknown language that you don't know. As a matter of fact, uh, in First Corinthians chapter number fourteen, you look here in First Corinthians chapter number fourteen, it it speaks of the power of speaking in an unknown tongue. The Bible says in First Corinthians fourteen and two, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. Have you ever had anybody say, you know? That talking in tongue stuff, it just kind of freaks me out because it don't make sense to me and I don't understand what they're saying. Well, uh, biblically, that's how it's supposed to be. The Bible says when you speak in tongues, you don't speak. When you speak in an unknown tongue, you don't speak unto men. But the, it continues to say, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. When you are speaking in that heavenly language, and you are praying in the Holy Ghost. When you when you get to that place in your prayer time where you're praying, you feel the Holy Ghost moving on you, and you press your way in and worship, and you get to that place where you're kind of, it almost feels like you're hitting up against a wall, and you don't know what else to say. You've got to let that unknown tongue come out. The Bible says when you speak in that unknown tongue that you're not talking to anybody else. You're talking directly to God. So let that go and speak that out. The Bible says whenever you speak that out, you speak directly unto God. When you're speaking in tongues, it is a direct connection between heaven and earth. It is a direct line. They used to sing that old song, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Uh, I hope you don't sing that in youth service, but the only way uh, that are the one way to get him on the main line is whenever you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you begin to speak in that unknown language. You speak directly unto God. Hell would love to intimidate you. Uh, hell would love to intimidate, uh, intimidate you and say, you know what? You don't know what you're doing. Don't speak. You know what? You're not supposed to know what you're doing. You're not supposed to, no, uh, nobody, nobody else knows what you're saying. It's a direct connection between you and God. The rest of that scripture says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 2, for no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. In the spirit, we've got to get in the spirit. We've got to get in the spirit. We can't allow our prayer time to be dry. But we've got to press. The Bible, the Bible says in Luke chapter number sixteen, for the kingdom, uh, for the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth his way in. You've got to press your way in. One thing that I do in prayer, and I probably do it every time I pray. I start out by saying, "Oh God, I press in today. I press into Your presence. I press into Your Spirit." We've got to press until we get in the spirit and go beyond the place of known. We've got to go beyond the place of what we know, and we've got to go to the unknown. But the Bible says, how be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Mysteries. What's the benefit of speaking mysteries. Why would I want to speak mysteries? Why would I want to say something that I don't I don't even know what I'm saying? Why would you want to say something that you don't even know what you're saying? Well, the Bible says in Romans 8, and I and I know this is a lot of different scriptures, but I, I want to I want to help somebody today. It says in Romans 8, uh, Paul, first of all, Paul is is 
is writing a letter to the church at Rome. And Rome was a church that was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they were baptized in Jesus' name. So you got to understand, the church at Rome had the Holy Ghost. And that's why Paul said, likewise, the Spirit, in Romans 8 and 26, likewise, the Spirit, that's a capital S, so that's the Spirit of God. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Paul said, we know not what we should pray. There's going to be times that you're so overwhelmed with things in your life and fears trying to creep up in your life and you got things going on at home and you got things going at school and you've got uncertain futures and that you don't know the prayer to pray. You, Paul said, Paul said, Rome, sometimes you're not going to know what to pray, but when you don't know what else to pray and you've reached a place in your prayer time where you've ran out of words, when you do not know the prayer to pray, the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That is the purpose of praying in the Spirit. Watch this. The Amplified Version says, In the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness, in my weakness, when I don't know what to say, when I've reached a dead end, we do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should. But the Spirit himself knows our need, and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. Sometimes you've got to get to the place in prayer that's too deep for words. What is that? That's praying in the Spirit. That's when you begin to speak in tongues. You know, I challenge you, you will, you will double your prayer time if you will commit to praying in tongues and praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit just as much as you pray in English. There's times that I get down and I'm praying and maybe I'm preaching somewhere and I, I don't even, maybe it's my first night to preach somewhere and I don't even know what that church is dealing with. I'll begin to pray and when I feel the Holy Ghost begin to move on me, I'll just begin to speak in tongues. Sometimes I'll do it for 10, 20, 30 uh, 30 minutes just getting lost in that prayer, in that spirit of prayer what, and uh, praying in the spirit. Why? Because sometimes I don't know what prayer to pray, but the Bible says the spirit, the spirit uh, offers intercession for me. So when I don't know the prayer to pray, when I begin to speak in that unknown language, I begin to speak in tongues, the Holy Ghost begins to speak through me and uh, and begins to speak the exact thing thing that needs to be prayed. You need to remember this. The Holy Ghost never misses. When you begin to pray in the Spirit, when you begin to pray in tongues, you are literally tapping into an all-knowing source. And when you don't know what to pray, and you don't know, uh, when you don't know what to say, when you begin to close your eyes and you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you begin to speak in tongues and let that tongue and let that tongue go. You got to understand the Holy Ghost never misses. I'm speaking the will of God. I'm praying to a direct situation. Jude, Jude wrote in Jude 1, 17 through 20. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. He said they don't have the Spirit, but watch this. But ye, ye who have the Spirit, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude 1 and 20. I challenge everybody to go to that place Go to that place in prayer where you pray in the Spirit and you speak mysteries. What's the benefit of speaking mysteries? I'll tell you what the benefit of speaking mysteries is. 
When I speak mysteries, I don't know what I'm praying, but God is speaking directly through me, directly to the situation. Right now, wherever you are, I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to pray for you, and I believe that the Lord is going to lead you to this and help you with this. God, you see every young person, you see every leader, you see every member, God, that's watching this video. I pray right now, God, that you would let them go to this place in prayer. God, I pray, Lord, that they would be able to press their way in. I pray that there would be a beckoning. I pray that there would be a beckoning to them, God, even now, God, as they as they hear this video, as they view this video. I pray, God, that you would draw them to this place of prayer, God. Speaking in tongues is not a one-time deal. It's not an every Sunday deal. It's an everyday thing, God, that you've called us to. God, you've given us the ability to speak mysteries and pray in the Spirit, God. And I pray, Lord, that everyone that sees this video, God, would go to that place of prayer and re realize and recognize the power that they have. Praise the Lord. I appreciate being with you. And uh, I challenge you, starting today, get to that place of prayer and pray in the Spirit.